I'm Brent Johnson, and today we have come to Dallas, Texas. I am at the Episcopal Church of the Transfiguration. With me is Joel Martinson, organist and director of music here at the church. Uh, and you are responsible for this instrument being here, correct? Uh, yes. I, we um, had a number of organists on the committee, and um, I had uh, been responsible for uh, a new instrument at St. Rita, and my good friend, um, Jerry D. Godwin, who was rector here, and I was also a parishioner at Transfiguration, um, asked, well, what he told the committee was he wanted a distinguished organ by a builder not represented in Dallas, and that already represented. So we had a number of people that that knocked out, and then even during our process, that was really fairly quick. Uh, we started um, first week in July. I started in June of 2004. First week in July, we had an organ committee meeting and a music series committee meeting, and we got going. And um, and then we had chose, rich, chosen Richard's Fawkes by um, November, basically. Oh, wow, so that was a quick process. It was a quick process. We were looking, though, at uh, builders who were either students of John Brumbaugh or basically in that school. There were reasons for um, for each of them and the reasons that they either took themselves out because of a long wait list or um, that we decided on, on the other builder. So um, I grew up in Oregon and uh, was in Salem um, as a teen when the Brumbo went into Central Lutheran in Eugene. So that was a huge life changer for me. And we had no organs that were really um, in what I would call a historic Germanic style. We had a lot of Neil Baroque organs here and some for German, but none that were really, um, really in this style, so it was a logical place to go. Okay. Well, and if you're a fan of the channel, we've been to one other Richard Falk's organ, and it's in Cincinnati at the cathedral. So it's interesting to compare this one to that one and yeah. see uh, things that are similar and things that aren't. Uh, what year did this finally go in then? This went in in 2009. Um, it was delivered um, in early July, and uh, Bruce likes to do a lot of all the final voicing in the space. So um, the case and um, case and a lot of the guts came on a Monday. We got it in, and then the next Monday, a substantial amount of pipe work came. But this was their fourth organ, I believe, in a row um, of fairly large instruments. So during the year of, well, nine months of voicing, different bits came at different times. I see. Well, it is a big organ. It fills this space completely. Fortunately, you've got, a, you've got a very large gallery here to, we do. to house it all. We do. And it is in a stunning red case, sort of reminiscent of, of St. Bavo here in Harlem. Yeah, a little uh, bit. It's mm -hmm. got a little bit of that calling to it, but um, especially with these, uh, the draw knob arrangement, it kind of makes me think of mm -hmm. that, that instrument. But uh, something different entirely, though. Really, tell me, uh, how, how's the best place to attack this instrument? And well, we're going to start with the principal 16. Okay. Um, which is in the facade, and the lowest note is uh, bass A, and of the principal, and then it goes down with some other shenanigans, you know, and then I believe the last four notes are um, shared with the pedal. So, um, and it is, the principal 16 um, is in the facade, and so it on the grate is the stop that is heavy tin content as opposed to lead. So um, this is a wonderful stop and coming from a very neo-baroque uh, organ um, reform movement instrument um, with only eight foot flutes mm -hmm. as your foundations, <laughs> it was wonderful to get this. So we'll start with this. Um, this is one of my favorite stops. It works lovely up an octave. And there you hear some of the mm. temperament. Yeah, very clear sound, but not spitty or, or bright at all. Just no. a nice, nice edge to it. And what I love about the Richards Fawkes uh, and, and organs like this is 
in a lot of organs, um, especially of a certain genre era, um, you have the eight foot, and it can be really sort of round and tubby, the four foot a little less that way, the two foot, and everything as it goes up gets thinner in scale. And so one of the things I like to do is take a C major chord, and so I'll play this 16 foot, then the eight foot, the four foot in tenor range, and the two foot way down the bass. And I think it's mostly to my ear, they actually tend to get a little bit softer, but they're all, um, mm. dif they're all different and nothing goes shrieky yeah, on you. Yeah, no, it's all, it's all we're nice and warm, mm -hmm. uh, even though it is getting a little yeah, tapered as you go up, but not, not ridiculously so. No, not at all. So then to add them together, uh, so we have principle 16. And the mixture on this instrument is similar to some of the other Richard's Falks. It's really sort of a combination of mixture symbol mm -hmm. type. Um, the mixture, when we go to the post teeth, the mixture there is a sharp and it is a higher composition. But this is a fairly um, big mixture. It's, it's pretty bright. Yeah. It is bright. It's great for um, repertoire, but it's not the first mixture that we use in accompanying, unless we're doing a big German. You know, it's lovely mm -hmm. for that, okay. but there are other ways to sort of cook that out. How many ranks are in that mixture, do you? I think it's four to six, okay. if I remember right. Okay. And we also have a quint, three, uh, or two and two thirds, and that is also principal. So that can be used as a, in a solo combination with, say, the gedekt and the uh, roar flute. Lovely it's a nice solo sound, and it all also adds in the um, uh, can add in the plenum as well. So that works really well. All right. And then we have two eight foot flutes, and these are both on the, yeah, two eight foot flutes and one four foot. All the flutes on the grate are out of um, uh, lead tin mm -hmm. combination. Okay. They're not wooden. No wood. All Our right. wooden flutes are on the positive. Interesting. So beautiful uh, good act. And the Spitz flute eight is here, and this is the largest flute, uh, the uh, loudest flute. And then. A little more, I would say, opaque. And it works nicely when we go to the strings of the swell, or even if you just use the uh, two eights, this is a, a nice place to go since we don't have a solutional. Mm. When you want a bigger sound with the yeah. choir, but not quite the principal, okay. the octave eight mm. yet. All right. Then one of my favorite stops, I always love sucker for roar flutes. So. And we have another roar flute on the uh, swell oh, as well. Okay, yeah, lovely. So that takes us through, through the great, uh, that part. And then we have the mounted cornet. And as they were designing the organ, um, they, whether the post chief was in the sort of the lower position or the higher position, the cornet always went with that. So there were they were determined that the cornet five, the mounted cornet, would be at the Always top, at the top. <laughs> and so that it could sail down. And I that makes sense. think that was from Dutch 
instruments, if I remember right. Makes sense, yeah. So um, this is big, quirky flute. <laughs> um, flute cornet, except the forefoot is always a, a principle. So it starts at middle C, goes up to D, and is you know just a wonderful thing. <laughs> And then goes, then gone. Just those two octaves. Just two octaves. Those are big two octaves. <laughs> they are big two octaves. And um, yeah. And yeah. then we have the two trump, the trumpet 16 and, mm. and 8. And um, they are just lovely. Dark Germanic sound there. Mm -hmm. But still a lot of, a lot of fire. I was kind of <laughs> surprised at how much fire they had. Yeah. And they said, what do you want, you know, you thought we were going to make dull reeds? And I said, well, I've heard dull Germanic reeds before in America. So anyway, no names on that. The 16. And those two are just really fun. And one of the things that's, well, uh, in terms of like getting a, a brighter sound, we don't, don't have a four foot there. Um, so when you're playing like uh, trumpet voluntary, stuff like that, um, we put the cornet and mm -hmm. the trumpet together, which is a typical thing and it works just fine. Also works well with that combination. You can kind of get a tuba-esque sound by pulling all the fawns the fawns out. Well, you lose it right there. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that's wonderful on this instrument, um, if you those who have played smaller smaller organs all their lives and you've had to couple everything together to get like a plenum, right. so you can do. Uh, what Bach frequent, what Bach seemed to like to do was pull a trumpet 16 out in the plenum, either with the, the eight foot or not. Mm -hmm. um, so it really gives you a fiery sound. Yeah. Or with the eight foot. You have the fiery and the silvery of the mixture, and you're not coupling anything, which so, is yeah, lovely. nice big full sound, but it's bright and, and mm -hmm. yeah, cutting through. Very nice. All right. Then going up, we'll go. Uh, we decided to use what would be more considered a French mm -hmm. style, since we don't have a rook postif. So we did the grade on the bottom, postif in the middle, swell on the top, and the postif is. Uh, the principle that's in the facade um, mm. is the principle eight. Okay. And they left more speech here, and so this is our silvery mm -hmm. principle. And as a friend of mine who dedicated the organ said, um, if you're in a trio sonata situation, that principle will always be the dominant one. <laughs> That's very present. It is very uh, present. Not only because it's in the facade, but that speech, it gives it a lot of clarity. It, it does. It just wants to draw attention to itself. And so compared to the, I'll do a little comparison, to the great, so you, here we're looking at the octave eight of the great, which is very um, heavier lead content. Here, and then here you have the silvery content. Um, yeah, what a difference! Which is which is beautiful. And then um, same thing if we go through the um, principles. So I'll start with the eight, and then play the octave four down an down an octave, and the two down two octaves. Yeah. 
Again, the forefoot has sort of a mellow thing. We um, frequently take these principles down an octave, I mean, trio sonatas, other things, because they are just uh, lovely. That's the forefoot principle. Yeah, indeed. Thanks. And we have the uh, one stop that we felt that we wanted at 16 rather than 8, as much as it'd be great to have it at 8, um, is the Quintadena. Mm -hmm. And um, we wanted a 16 foot on every manual. Mm -hmm. okay. And the Quintadena is so large, uh, this huge, I mean, very big scale, that it actually runs in all the way from the pedal, <laughs> the C side to the C sharp side, in order to get it in, because yeah. it is eight feet tall. Okay. Um, and actually, let's listen to that. It doesn't exactly accompany itself. Um, Great. One thing that's nice is to take it for a last note, a uh, soft note in the pedal. You've got that on, and then you just add it at the end. And it gives hmm. sort yeah. of resultant, so it's useful that way. It adds a lot of punch to the plenum, and yeah, um, I can so now with the principles going up to the sharp, and then I'll pull the quintadena out. Oh. And here's the great plenum. It's just lovely for Buxtehude to pull the Quintadena out. It adds so much more than just the 16 foot. It's, it adds. It does it add that, that little uh, Quinty yeah, color. The whole um, sound of that division. Amazing. And then we, so we have the Quint, and that's lovely up an octave alone. Um, It's also lovely with our little, this is the softest flute, and the flutes on the post like I said, the two eight foots are the, the uh, wooden uh, stops along with the subots and the pedal. And the flute do is a little teeny tiny stopped <laughs> um, good act. And even though we're Very not nice. going to the swell yet, from the to the organist, it actually is softer than the roar flute with the box closed from the swell. To to the organist, it sounds like it's about the same. But if we're in the room, the swell sounds about twice as loud. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, down yeah. here they're about the same. They are about the same. Huh. And then we have this beautiful whole fluta, uh, which is um, just built like a whole flute, tapered. And uh, the second largest stop and um, goes from. And is, I find if I play anything kind of French that calls for the positive flute, which would be open not harmonic flute, well, yeah, kind of harmonic, that this would, except for the chiff, this would be sort of <laughs> equivalent. All right. mm -hmm. um, and it's just lovely. And then, of course, you can always color the quint with the flute do is fun. And these two we have to uh, carefully tune in different 
different parts of the year because oh. especially the <laughs> dew changes. Really? This is so huge, the big wide, that mm -hmm. tends to change and you just tune the, um, the little um, top that's mm -hmm. metal. Okay. And then uh, as long as it's not too humid, then you can do the do. Just the stoppers there. So we try to get those together <laughs> because it is quite a lovely sound. And uh, since we have them, I'll put the, all the eight foot flutes together mm -hmm. now. Immersive sound there just it washes is. You over. And you. we're a little out of tune. Um, well, it's still warm out there today. It is. It still hasn't. <laughs> um, it's fall, but it's not quite fall weather yet. No, yeah. Not yet. <laughs> and then we have a Spitz flute four, of course, mm -hmm. totally independent from the eight, so I'll kind of compare them. Um, this is a little cutie, too. And here is then the eight foot from the grate. Nice. It's, been, it, it's interesting that the flute, so of the Spitz flutes, um, you have the eight foot on the grate, the four foot on the positive. And then when you're dealing with the roar flutes, you have the eight foot on the swell and the four foot on the grate. Oh, I see. Right. So you get some combinations between open and closed, mm -hmm. and, yeah, and all right. that. So that's fun, fun to have. Then we have the uh, sesquialtera. So you have the big principal um, cornet on the postif, and that runs all the way down. It does mean that if you want the sesqui in your in a big great planum, you do have to couple at least that down. Okay. Um, yeah, and uh, I will jump here to an equivalent sound. This is the yeah. flute cornet uh, from the swell. We can't mm. we can't use the grate because there's no bass, but um, and then the principal. It's nice to have that variety of cornet colors. It is, and it's and, not, and, and scales ex exactly, and it's really nice to have. I mean, and we. It is what you traditionally find on uh, a Dutch or North German organ, which is the principles on the postif, and those were usually meant to solo out um, cantus for the okay. congregation. Very nice. So it's nice to have them together, and that adds a nice sound to the plenum. Then we have a larigo. It was the first uh, flute one and a third that, uh, that Richard Fox ever built. Ooh. Um, we asked for that. I love Larigos, so. Um, um, not that different than the principal, just a little bit, but the princ principal is a little fluty down yeah, there. Yeah, but the but Larigo is definitely a flute. Totally a flute. So, uh, and it's, it's useful for, um, for the hymns, so if you have throw the larigo on, works very well um, as a you know sort of little mixturey thing, um, and then of course you can also. It's one of the great things about this instrument. You play up an octave, and so you get 
uh, with the two foot and the one and third. Mixture up there without even exactly, a mixture. <laughs> yeah, and it's very easy to do, and that was part of the reason we did the A compass okay. because you really you can play most uh, most things you know up an octave. Okay. Then we have a lot of colorful uh, reeds here. Yeah, the Dulzian, which is basically um, it's a cylindrical, like mm -hmm. a crumb horn or a clarinet, and sometimes has that character. So this is little. It's not quite as massive as a crumb horn, um, mm -hmm. so it can sub for an English clarinet a little bit. So it gets much brighter, thinner in the treble. It's lovely in the um, tenor register. So the Dulzian, and that also works nicely with um, the chorus, just like they do on um, Germanic organs. And with the quint. Then we have um, the little fractional reed, the Vox Humana, and on Richard Falk's organs, they're, I don't remember who they're designed after, but they look like little milk cans. Yeah, yeah, the little you Dutch know? style. Yeah. yeah, Dutch style, yeah. And you have to tune those a lot, and it looks like we have a couple to do there. Um, <clears throat> it's nice that it also adds, we don't do this very much unless we have it totally in tune, but um, with the Dulcian, you can add the Vox, and it just get, makes it a little more bzz. It's a little more crumb horn like, but I'm not exactly sure what that is. It's yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if you're playing something that needs Renaissance. It just gives you a little brighter edge to it. I like it. Okay. Renaissance style stuff. And then the Xiaomai 4, mm. this was this is our um, 47th stop, so we raised money. They were gonna they at first we had everything and they said you really need a four <laughs> foot, and we had gone out to Scottsdale, Arizona, and heard their opus 14. At Pinnacle Prez, and um, and the forefoot was lovely. So the Shalmai, many organists will hear Shalmai and just do this, <laughs> you know, because we heard just little neo baroque, yeah. teeny tiny. <laughs> so especially as a forefoot in the pedal, where it was totally yes. yeah, right. less. But this forefoot, the Shalmai is basically a small trumpet. Oh. Um, yeah. So, like, here's the eight foot. So that's the great eight. And the four foot. It's a much more useful color mm -hmm. uh, at four foot and even down it an octave. It is eight. much more. And it gives, so by having it in the postif, you give the planum something there. Um, 
Yeah. It's pretty snarly with the sesqui and all that, but without. You've got that. And that extra brightness up there. Very nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and we'll revisit that with the great trumpets. We'll put all those three together when we're. Okay. So we have a, a chorus of trumpet 16 8 4, basically, mm -hmm. and then. Um, as we move to the swell, we'll see that that has basically a Dolzian 16, so you can get okay. a little uh, yeah. Dolzian chorus too. All right, well, let's come over here to the swell and tell me what we've got. Okay, so flute-wise, we've heard the roar flute. Beautiful, open, roar flute, beautiful chimney, uh, flute out of um, um, heavy lead. And then, uh, rather than a principal eight, we have a solitional, and then it's partnered the celeste, tuned a little sharp. These are also, other than the facade pipes, these are the ones that are out of tin. Okay. Heavy tin as well. So I think that's sort of a traditional thing to do. I, for them, maybe. For Richard's <laughs> Fox. For uh, the, the um, Brumbaugh School, yes, I think so. Yeah, so the solitional. Um, little thinner, um, mm -hmm. even than the softest, well, here's our softest four foot, the principal four on the swell. And then. Of course, all that's in a box. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the solitional with the celeste, our strings. And then you can cook that with the <laughs> roar flute as well. Yeah, it still and works. It does work. Yeah. And yeah, um, first time that George Baker was here, um, I guess we were trying all the eight foots, and he loved the Celeste and with, oh, really? with well, with the, all the eight foot flutes. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, okay. it's quite a little. A Celeste gets obliterated by the, all those other unison stops, but here it actually it's, it's still in right there. enough to cut mm -hmm. through and add some more of that e that immersion that we're getting. Yeah, here. and it adds a little <laughs> of that central German mm -hmm. yeah. to, st to everything okay. here. So that's basically the solutional A foot are our you know the equivalent on the swell of the of the principal eight, and this is where um, I like to use the spits on the great then um, when I'm going up uh, for something for the choir. Um. It's kind of the way to get to eventually. Usually via um, adding four foots and so on and so forth. See. Okay. So our um, principal chorus is the solitional, the roar flute, the principal four that we heard down an octave. So those two together. Then you can get brightness from the vault flute. And then the mixture is a 
two-foot mixture, which means you get a two and two-thirds in there mm. pretty soon. Yeah. So, um, and at the organ, it sounds like you couldn't accompany him, but actually downstairs, it's amazing what an equal partner this well is. Really? And what's, of yeah. course, very handy is to have, you know, whatever you set up on the grate that you can't control, and then couple this um, thing, uh, you know, the swell, the sort of cage lion swell to... Yeah, down here it sounds kind of diminutive compared to the grate, but I'm guessing out there in the room it's... Yeah, even where you you are, it's a little louder than where I am. Really? <laughs> Just that And then space. when you get to the bottom of the gallery, it's pretty close to okay. what you get there. Well, fortunately, our microphones, as always, are out there where the right. congregation would be, <clears throat> so our listeners are hearing what we hearing should be hearing. Hearing what you, yes. Yeah. Um, sometimes, though, it's a... We've... Um, in the years since having the organ um, and, and having a number of um, accompanists, I, I accompany sometimes and other people direct. So it's real helpful to know that if, you know, if basically you're supposed to use lots of stuff, you probably need the box pretty closed <laughs> until a big section with the choir, until the choir is very strong. Much louder than the organist thinks. Much All louder right. than the organist okay. thinks. Okay, good to know. So then we have, um, other flutes, uh, we had the roar flute. Then the four-foot flute is basically a couple flute. Oh. So straight up and then um, tapered at the top. And the uh, Richard Svauks, Bruce and Ralph take that, I don't remember what organ that they've really taken their inspiration for that from, but it's a lovely flute down an octave. Being open compared to the roar flute. So it's really nice for romantic music yeah, as long yeah, as yeah. you have that. You and harmonic sound there, even mm -hmm. though it's even though it's covered. Even though it's okay. it's not. Yeah. And then the Nazard, uh, of course, in in its different key. Um, let's see if I can rip. So there's the flute and then the Nazard. And the Waldflute, I know, is taken from the Schnitger in um, Norden. Okay. And sort of has, all of these flutes have triple ascendancy. So okay. even though they're not harmonic flute, they still build they up. They still as build up. Okay. And then the Terce is also. Um, so, okay. and that makes that beautiful Cornet we heard before. Mm -hmm. Um, we already heard the mixture. Then the fagot is um, the, I don't know, if it's the nephew or the <laughs> grandfather of the Dolzian. So the fagot is very nice and useful as long as you want to use it alone because there's no 16 up there to put with it. Right. Um, you can color it, but it's in the box. the Dolzian, if you were very similar, but almost an echo of it there, mm -hmm. yeah. but, but different. And then you've got, you've got the box. The trumpet here is just lovely. Lots of, um, it works great for English stuff. It's got some nice bite, sort of Frenchy. to remind ourselves of the great. Yeah, much brighter, but still in that dark leaning German mm -hmm. sort of <laughs> and it And it sounds to us here again, mm -hmm. because it's way above us, it sounds a little mellower, okay. <laughs> but that tends to go away when you go up there. And then we have the oboe.
and then uh, can be used, of course, in the French school. Works really nice solo-wise. Um, then one uh, nice thing to be able to do is sort of play with the great trumpets and then the post-tief and swell our little Dolzian mm -hmm. ensemble. Oh. So. And then you can put the oboe together with the dolzian and you know even with the fox if we start getting and then we can also do the shamai with the um, trumpets Those reeds are so unique. You've got so many different combinations of 16, 8, and 4 and brightness, and it's fascinating uh, how much you can do with just those few ranks. And then you throw the, um, the flute cornets in, yeah. and you get a real <laughs> respectable. You'd be able to color all of those and make anything, any sound you want, probably. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. <laughs> all right. Yeah, and then things down an octave and whatever. Yeah. Well, then we go to the pedal. We have a number of pedal stops here. Yeah, so the lowest note in the pedal, the lowest of the principal 16 that's in the facade is E. And I got to gild that. Oh. That was my, <laughs> I decided I would do one, so they made me do the lowest. And that's down here. For the 16-foot pedal principle on an organ this size, it's very gentle. Generally. It's fairly gentle. It's got a lot of nice speech to it, but it's pretty laid back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and they depend, they, uh, unlike some of their organs are more cons committed to North German and Dutch instruments, you really want the subas with mm. that. So subas no, alone. It's also gentle. Yeah, but it gives you a lot of foundation. Mm -hmm, it does. So you put those together and you get... It's more what I would expect a 16-foot principle yeah, to sound like more, on its own. So. A little more contrabassy. Well, that's good that you've got that, that variety then of uh, mm -hmm. loud and soft in your brightness. So that's in the facade and then we have the, the octave 8 and the octave 4. and then two foot mixture. Oh. And then with the Sioux Boss. Yeah, nice full chorus sound there. And then the, another Spitz eight, Spitz Hoop eight, independent, independent of the uh, one on the great. Yeah, so the spits, so everything in the, in the pedals independent of the manuals, uh, except, yeah, we are dealing with the trumpets. Then the Posana 16 is uh, metal, and then the bottom notes are independent of that, and they are wooden. Okay and about 20, I think I figured about 24 feet long is the low, the 32 is about 24 feet, starts about this level, <laughs> chest level for us and goes to the ceiling and comes back. Wow. <laughs> Minor. So um, again here, so here's the four foot, and then the 16. Got on 
D somewhere. All right, so then here's the Poisson note. Starts, uh, the tenor C is the lowest note of the 16, and then it goes down. So you, if you're up by that, you can actually <laughs> feel the... I could feel it here, it's in the floor. And <laughs> like count it. So, but that funny sound actually adds a lot. So just the pedal alone. And then coupling that into the great chorus, mm -hmm. it's pretty exciting. Yeah, what a sound. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty thrilling. Excellent. Then we have two toys. Yeah, I got a couple of sound effects here. So we have the Fogel Gesang, bird song, mm -hmm. which is nice. fun. We mm -hmm. don't use it a lot. <laughs> uh, and then the Zimbelstern. They're important. They're important. <laughs> Zimbelstern actually makes, again, we're a long way from the swell. That sits on top of the swell. Okay box and it is um, I think six I always forget if it's five or six um, Schulmerich bells and we have a five octave set here that's and these are all higher than that okay so they're way up so you can <laughs> mm -hmm. they're seconds from Schulmerich and then the Fogel song I keep um, baby oil in mm -hmm. instead of water so it doesn't so evaporate I've only mm -hmm. added baby oil once and it was um, within this last year. Oh wow, okay. Since the dedication. Good to keep that working. Well this is just an amazing instrument. Um, I mean, tell me a little bit about the case design because this is a little kind of over the top with the gold leaf and, and all the that. building and all um, these carvings. How did this come to be the choice? Well they love hinge organs mm -hmm. and so uh, I was fortunate enough to be on a sabbatical a few years ago and I saw one of the hinge organs that this is based on. Mm -hmm. um, although it, and that organ is uh, sort of a brown color and then has statuary on it. So we don't have statuary, <laughs> we don't have wings. Um, but they really felt the brown in this room uh, it's all brown brick, and it used to be, uh, not when Richard Falk saw it, but it used to be dark brown pews, all of that. And the color that really stands out the most in the triptych in the front, other than the gold that you see, and because of the brown, that doesn't stand that much. Red is number one, and then blue, and, um, but blue organs are, <laughs> blue cases are, they probably exist in Sweden, but <laughs> other than that, you don't see them much. So red, red was a uh, natural choice. Bava was red. And they had previously built an instrument in Tennessee for a room that ended up having a lot of orange in it. And so they made sort of a mahogany-looking case, darker, that was all full finished. Mm. And they had done full finish way back. So they decided to try the same thing. So all the grain, everything on the case, in the case is basically, I mean on the case, is faux, so, except for the music rack. Okay. So, but the grain is all, any grain that was there was painted out and mm. they left us archeological evidence inside <laughs> the case. Okay. So we'll go see that. Grain was painted out and then they painted on, in, um, the man who did the painting up here um, in Chattanooga, a friend of one of the workers, um, painted all of the design on, and then they used um, diluted artist paint to do this faux finish. Uh, it looks amazing, and I could have been fooled uh, that it's mm -hmm. not finished wood, so yeah. excellent. Kind of a rosewood color, mm -hmm. if you could make that yeah. you know, <laughs> be this way. And then we have our figs for mm -hmm. transfiguration and um, 
right here, and then nice figs around around the way. So it's it's just one of the most beautiful key desks um, it's, it's that I've ever been. Something at. to see, yeah, definitely. Well, I can't wait to see more of it inside and to see yeah, how it fits together. Take a tour. So here we are at the base of the case. Um, it's very packed on this side. We've got the stairs to take us up to the post level and then another set of stairs taking us to the grate. And right in here, you can see a lot of the wind system, the three bellows in single stack and the pedal trackers, the offset, pedal chest with the 32 foot reeds and off also offset to some other um, low bass notes. So I always like this view because you can see the very 21st century technology here. And then when we go around the corner, 
we're, um, we're here with the old uh, mechanical key action for the whole organ. So these are the coupler mechanisms for the pedal. These are the couplers for the manuals. And then we actually see the um, roller board for the pedal. And uh, underneath us is the pedal action carrying it to the sides of the cases. got two of the base uh, pipes that speak for the um, 16 are up there. So the fuse pipes are on this level. Then here we have the archaeological evidence of how they did the finish of the organ. So they painted all the grain out with Pearl Harbor and then traced lines on did flicking to give this, and then the final finish. Oh, here's our bird. So the way that they did this Vogelgesang, you can see my baby oil. So there's one pipe in the front, uh, pipe that, organ pipe like thing, and then a bubbler, and so by the bubbler moving the liquid, it um, makes the pipe produce different sounds. And there he is. All right, so right here, we're, we're on the positive level, and what we're looking up right here are the C-sharp side 32-foot posaunas. Um, and they're tuned by that slat there, basically cut to length. And then the largest ones, the largest three on each side are actually in two pieces. And you can see where the cutaway is. So we always tell, you, tell people don't grab onto the pipe when you're coming up. This is the pedal four foot trumpet, eight foot trumpet, 16 foot polizona and then going out that way, um, the, f other, the upper flues, and then the principal and the facade. And as they were voicing the organ, they discovered that a lot of bass was trapped inside the case. So they sent panels on what I call the second and third level back to the shop. Um, they have a neighbor who does uh, laser cutting um, and so they cut all these openings and we got much more of the um, sound out. And then um, in the nifty design, they have uh, you just move this out of the way to be able to enter into the positive area. So behind us, uh, often Richard Falk's cases are very luxurious and you have lots of space for um, the technician to work if they need to do anything. And, and here we've got a big uh, open area, but you've got some things in the way. But this, this was basically the area that you could take pipes apart, especially the reeds apart, uh, fix anything on the tongues. You have the uh, roller board for the swell here. And let's see, we have some of the uh, action for the swell. Um, shades here and then when we turn around we've got the positive which is in the center of the case at this level sort of the second level of the organ so here we can see the uh, principal eight pipes in the front and uh, people are always um, you always think that facade means um, that they're fake and they don't play, but in our facade, um, they do in fact play, but we do have some dummy pipes in order to give enough of the, um, to, to get the 
front of the case covered with pipes. Um, so in this case, the dummy pipes are actually down there, just in these little, this one curved area here. It's like a flat, but it's slightly curved. So this lower area, those do not speak, but these speak, and you can see the tubes going off into them. And then the front, uh, those the rest of the principles, and then we have our big Quintadena 8 that also has some pipes down there because it's so, that's the stopped pipes here. Then we have the next thing would be the whole flute 8, the little flute do 8, and then the principal 4, spitz flute 4, and the two foot. Um, principle, then this should be the sesquialtera, and this is our little larigo, yes, and the mixture, the sharf, and then we have the fagot, which was the cylindrical, like, dulzian, and the vox humana, um, with the little milk cans, and then, and that's also out of heavy tin, heavily tin, in the tin lead mixture, and then the shalmai four, our little trumpet, and um, another difference with the neo-baroque ones is the shamai is, is really full length. That's really four foot there. Here we do have to tune um, this. This is the whole flute. So seasonally, we have to tune that a little bit by pushing that in and out. And then the stoppers on the flute do. So the principal, uh, like I mentioned, the principal 16 of the pedal, the C and the D, are here on the outside of the case, and they're actually very large wooden pipes. That's the lowest note of the 32 foot. And then you have a pipe here, which is not a speaking organ pipe, but it's actually the air conditioning for the organ, uh, particularly in Texas, it's real important when you have um, different divisions in a rear gallery, and even if you're front, in any case, you really have to have air conditioning dropping in so that you don't get um, out of tuneness with the stratification. And then here's the C side of the pedal division. And on this side of the case, the Posauna 16 actually goes through the roof, but you don't see it from the front because um, we're not that tall. So here we find ourselves on the third level. It's actually um, probably the level with the most organ pipes because both the grate, which we see here, and the swell in the box behind us are here. Um, one of the unique things uh, up in this division um, is the mounted cornet right here. And you can see that it's made of a roar flute, stop flute in the front, flute eight, principal four, flute uh, three in this case, two, and a one and a third. And so they're mounted and so they just speak lovely um, right, and right down from the ceiling down to the lower part. Here we have, uh, again, a set of dummy pipes. The lowest ones in this area speak and then the upper ones are, are dummies right in this section. And you see the huge Spitz flute eight, tapered pipe there. And then the Gedeckt eight, um, principal four, roar flute four, two foot. And then we've got our mixture. And then the trumpet 16. Um, the very lowest notes are partial length, and then at whatever that is, uh, they go to full, full length, and then the eight-foot trumpet here. Do 
and then there's the Zimbelstein. So it's like an air wheel, and then the bells um, are at an angle with that. So at the very back of the swell is the solitional, and that's also really heavily tin, and its celeste is separated. So the solitional, and then you can see the roar flute and then the other flute and principal pipes. Um, the couple flute, the forefoot, uh, you can really see through here. Has a little taper at the top. Three reeds are the um, fagot, which is again cylindrical, and then the trumpet, and then the oboe. Oboe is also out of um, Tin. The shiny things are tin. Uh, each division, the chests are laid out slightly differently so that all the air doesn't go to one place. You don't, you don't put all the organ pipes high here and then down to low because the wind chests, the lower pipes would pull all the air. So you tend to see these peaks and valleys. And in the swell, the lowest octave of the pipes is uh, uh, both sides, the C side, C sharp side, is right here. And uh, as opposed to the great, um, the lowest octave starts here, and then, then the next octave is there, and then you can see the peak and valley. So it's, it's a different situation. Joel, thank you so much for showing me around the Richard Falk organ here at the Ep Episcopal Church of the Transfiguration. Uh, we'll get the whole name in there. Uh, this has been amazing to see. I've known about this instrument. I've seen pictures of it, uh, and I might have heard a recording or two, but it's really great to see it firsthand and to hear this wonderful sound in here. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. Uh, it's wonderful to show you. Parent, your knowledge of the instrument is, is very thorough, and, and um, it's great to talk to somebody that knows how to explain one of these instruments. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then please give us a thumbs up down below, and remember to subscribe to our channel because we do have some more videos coming out from here in Dallas. We're going to be here for a couple of days. Uh, so I hope you'll follow us on our little journey and we'll meet some more great organists like Joel uh, and hopefully some more great organs, although I don't know, this one's going to be hard to top. <laughs> so uh, until our next videos are out, though, remember you can find streaming classical organ music on our three stations, OrganLive.com, Positively Baroque, and The Organ Experience. Uh, Joel, thank you one more time uh, sure, from all of you. us and I hope you've enjoyed it. Until our next video is out, I'm Brent Johnson. Thank you for watching.